Well, here's five examples of balancing uh, equations. Uh, <clears throat> this first one, uh, I've got barium hydroxide reacting with, uh, looks like carbonic acid. So, um, and it produces barium carbonate and water. So I need to balance things out. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this water as HOH. Just because in double replacement reactions like this one, maybe I'll write that, double replacement, um, it's useful to keep the polyatomic ions together. So don't think of them as being an oxygen and a hydrogen. Think of them as a hydroxide. So there's a hydroxide. Here's a hydroxide. Here's a hydrogen, there's some hydrogen, carbonate, carbonate, barium, barium. So we need to balance all of that. Bariums look fine as they are, but here, because of this two, that means I have two hydroxides. So to get two hydroxides, and here's my hydroxides on this side, to get two there, I need to put a two in front. So that gives me two hydroxides, but it also gives me two hydrogens. So I go over on this side, and oh, I have the two hydrogens, so that's good. Here I have one carbonate, over here I have one carbonate, one barium, one barium, so it looks like everything's balanced. <clears throat> if you wanted to, you could write things down like this. You could put barium and hydroxide. Like I say, if I can see a hydroxide on each side, treat them as one thing, Not don't treat them as an oxygen and a hydrogen. And then I have a hydrogen and a carbonate. So if you want to look at it and initially say there's one barium on this side, one barium on that side. Uh, on the left side, I've got two hydroxides. And because of this two here, I've got two hydroxides on that side. Two hydrogens there. And because of this two, I've got two hydrogens there. Even. One carbonate, one carbonate. Everything's balanced. Let's try another one. Okay, uh, sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate. It looks like it's breaking up. I don't know if I'd call that a simple decomposition. It looks like more of a complicated one. I might just call this an other reaction. Okay, let's separate things out again. Oh, I have a problem on this one though because I have, here I have a bicarbonate but nowhere, or hydrogen carbonate, but nowhere on this side do I have the same thing. So it looks like, darn, I'm going to be stuck with uh, uh, doing each element separate. So sodiums and hydrogens, carbons and oxygens. Let's just write what we have down so far. So here I have one sodium. Here I've got two sodiums. I'm going to need to fix that. Here I have one hydrogen. Over here, it looks like I have two hydrogens. I have one carbon here. Here, I also have just one carbon. Notice that three only applies to the oxygen, unless there were brackets there. Okay, for oxygens, right here, I've got three oxygens. Here, I've got three, four, five, six. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm going to have to balance things out. Looks like the sodiums, the hydrogen, the carbons are okay, but sodium, hydrogens, and oxygens are goofy. Uh, let's just start, maybe start with sodiums. So say I put a two here for the sodium. When I do that, that's going to give me two So I'll cross this out and put a two there. So that'll be good. But then that also gives me two hydrogens. Oh, which is also good. Nice. It gives me two carbons. Oh, that messes me up. Um, but now it also gives me six oxygens. Boy, that was all good except for the carbons. Okay. Oh, no, hold on here. I counted wrong. There's a carbon here and there's a carbon there. So there are two carbons on this side. Hey, it's done. Oh, that was lucky. Uh, so um, that was a little bit tougher one to keep track of all that stuff, especially where there's multiple places where you can find a carbon, or in this case also an oxygen. So it looks like that's all balanced. Maybe I should get rid of my... Uh, 
all my arrows while I was talking. Uh, but it looks like the balanced Kenwick equation is just 2, 1, 1, 1. And you don't have to put the 1s in, but I don't mind putting them in. Let's try another one. Okay, ammonia reacts with oxygen to produce nitrogen oxide plus uh, water. Hmm. I don't think I'll switch this H2O to HOH because I don't see an OH on this side. So I think I'll just leave water as is. Let's look though. Let's let's do our nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, oxygen. So on the left, I have one nitrogen. Right, I got one nitrogen. Hydrogen, I've got three on this side. Here, I only have two. Oxygen, I have two. Here, this side, I have one, two. So the only thing that's good there is uh, oxygens. But the hydrogens are goofy. So three, two, I'd probably go with the common denominator of that and just see how, how that works. So a common denominator of six. So let's get six hydrogens out of this. So if there's a three there already, if I put a two in front, that gives me six. Okay. And then over on the other side, I'm going to put a three here because the three times the two gives me six. Okay. Let's just update this. So the hydrogen now becomes six on each side. But now let's take stock of the hydrogen, nitrogen, all that stuff. Uh, so here I've got two nitrogens. So this is two now. Over on this side is still one. Let's see oxygens. Oxygen is still two on the left. On the right now, I've got four oxygens. Because I have three here and one there. Okay, uh, let's fix those nitrogens. If I put a two here, that's going to give me two nitrogens. But that's going to change my oxygens too, right? So that'll be two plus another three. On this side, I'd have five oxygens now. So what number can I put in front of the oxygen there uh, to give me five? And you could put 2.5, because two and a half times two does give you five. But typically, we double everything. So, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'm just going to, the first one's a two, so I'm going to double it to four. Let me just erase all my stuff that I've thrown on there, including this stuff down here. And if you want to do that stuff at the bottom, you can, but you don't have to. You could do something like this, say, okay, if there's four there. That gives me four nitrogens, so I need a four here to give me four nitrogens. I also get 12 hydrogens, so over here I need to put a six there, and that gives me 12 hydrogens. Now, to count up my oxygens, I have four there, and another six there, so four and six is 10 oxygens on the right side. So in order to get 10 on the left side, I need to put a five there. Now, um, in terms of what type of reaction that is, it almost looked like a combustion kind of thing, eh? but there wasn't a carbon in it. I might just call that an other kind of reaction. And maybe there's a specific name for uh, burning uh, ammonia. But uh, I'd probably just call it an other react. Okay, magnesium sulfide decomposes. Hmm. So magnesium sulfide, uh, magnesium and sulfur. Let's look down to see what their charges are. Uh-oh. Uh, why are those together? Okay, magnesium right here. It's a two plus. Sulfur's in this column, and this is a two minus. So one's a two plus, one's a two minus. Okay, let me go back then. So uh, two plus, two minus, they're even Steven, so the formula, yeah, it'll just be MGS. Okay, and it decomposes. So this has to be a decomposition reaction. Decomposes to its elements. Magnesium written by itself is just mg you could call it a solid it's a metal plus uh, sulfur sulfur when it's written by itself is always s8 there we go and again probably a solid this would be a solid too okay so now to balance that 
uh, magnesiums are good, but sulfurs are out. So eight here, only one there. So I'm going to put an eight out front there. That'll give me the eight sulfurs that I need, but it also gives me eight magnesiums, which I can put an eight there balanced. Let's try one more. Bromine is added to a solution, the tin four iodide. All right, bromine. So symbol for bromine is Br, and it's one of those diatomic elements down there. So it's it's Br two, and bromine is typically a liquid. Plus a solution of so it's a solution solution when they say solution I'm going to write aqueous and tin four iodide let me write that up here so tin and it's a four plus iodine is in that column there so it's a one minus so to balance those things out I'm going to need four of these all together right so my formula will be S N I four so bromine reacts with tin four iodide to produce. It'll be a single replacement reaction because I have a compound and an element. So this bromine is going to come and kick the iodine out. So it's going to form uh, tin bromide. Now let's just see here. This is a four plus. Well, bromine is in that same column. So it'll be a SNBr4. Okay, and that'll probably be aqueous too. I'm just guessing. I, I'll show you later how you can determine uh, exactly what that is. Plus, an iodine gets kicked off by itself. Now, iodine is one of those diatomic elements. Right there. So remember, hydrogen is a two. So is nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then this whole column. So iodine is, is a two, whoops. Okay, so it'd be I2 there. Okay, so let's balance things. Um, things are a little out of whack. I guess iodine has two here as four there. So if I put a two there, iodines are good. Bromines, I have four here, only two here. So I'll put a two in front of that. That'll give me four bromines. On the tin, I don't have to do anything with. There's one there and one there, so it's balanced. Okay, hopefully that uh, gave you a, a little bit of help with um, writing and balancing chemical reactions.